Sorry for a lack of clarity, but I'm next day uh, just reviewing it. Of course, I still got the P catalytic converters as I haven't, haven't replaced those. PO328, the knock sensor should come right back. It doesn't set the check engine light, but it is an issue. And the PO183 and 463 should go away. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get those reset and come back. Okay, yep, no codes. Well, I have a code, but no code that sets a check engine light, just the uh, knock sensor. One, two, two. three, four. Welcome to the DE Nichols channel. Autobottle.com. I tur did turn it off at, at a light um, after the reset and turn it back on. No biggie. Just waste a little gas. Um, so, yeah, the PO328, that's going to automatically reset because uh, voltage is going straight through it. Uh, I could check the voltage on it, but I trust the computer in this case uh, since it is a common failure on these cars. I'm going to get that changed out, but I'm going to do it the wrong way first. And some smart people on Scanner Danner's video on the PO328 said that it's hard to argue whether which job I want first. Uh, the a knock sensor running good is supposed to give you two, three miles per gallon better because the engine automatically runs a very gentle, careful tune to protect itself. It doesn't want any issues when with knock because that causes piston damage, that reduces the life of the engine, all things that you don't want. So it's running conservative tune and that means not pushing it on the envelope because as it doesn't have a knock sensor, it's going to have timing a bit retarded. It's not going to go deep into those fuel maps for efficiency because if it pushes the limit to get more energy out of the fuel, it's going to knock. And it can't risk that while the knock sensor is not working. So one to three miles per gallon better is what Scanner Down and I, I sure could use that. I'm already getting uh, three to four miles per gallon that I'm supposed to in this, this big 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 for a frontier, big frontier. Um, however, I've also noticed that you lose a lot of power when catalytic converters aren't working right because, again, the engine's like, well, I'm burning dirty, I'm going to burn less. And it cuts you down on your power and your efficiency. Um, when I got a, a new catalytic converter on the Chevy Prism, I got 50% more horsepower and went from 60 to 90 horsepower at the wheels. Granted, I know that's not a perfect experiment. I did go big on the catalytic converter, and that is partly why it's responsible for giving that car more kick and go than I ever felt before. But uh, with a good rear O2 sensor, it opened up my power even further. I noticed that it would run richer than it had in the past. It would test, hey, is this catalytic converter for real? And it's like, oh. I no longer get flappy signs or no signs. Okay. And it whipped out some more horsepower just by replacing the O2 sensor in the rear that had gotten ripped out. I feel that just the fact that it didn't see it had a new catalytic converter for a while, and I saw how that drove, and when it could see the catalytic converter functioning, that opened up the car more. I feel functional catalytic converters do allow PCMs to pull more energy out of your ride. I don't know. You know, I, I haven't done it a lot, so I can't say for sure that's a great experiment, but if I keep seeing those results, I'll feel good about having said it. If, if nothing else, remember, when I'm trying to dig deep into things and learn things, the goal is for us to all learn. It's the conversation that will help us open up to our own experience, experiences and experiments and we can all learn together. And that's, that's really what I'm about. That's why I'm always commenting on people's channels, other than being a social butterfly. I love to learn. If you don't talk to other people that know things you don't, you can't know what they know. Oh, just a few miles, if this was a 2000 or older in my state, it would pass emissions. It's hard to see behind my barometer, uh, but it's just the EGR that still shows yellow and the evaporated system. Um, since I, I think 2000 up to some year, maybe 2006, 
it yet. You only have one incomplete, and on newer vehicles, all of them have to complete. EVAP never completes on this one, so thankfully it's not a, a newer truck. That might mean there's something wrong with it, but it's not bad enough that it can find the issue, and it might be pretty small. Well, that's very quick. Let's double check those codes. It takes a second to load up. It is an absolutely beautiful day outside, by the way. It is truly a beautiful, sunny, sunny day. I'm grateful my AC doesn't work. Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm grateful it's still cool enough to not matter. Okay, that's what I'll say. Yeah, I'd still just have the P0328, so we should be good. Well, I'll be. Maybe my catalytic converters aren't bad. Those rear O2 sensors are as steady as can be. Hope my camera can pick up on it in the sunlight. I can barely see it on the camera. Maybe uh, bad fuel sensors, not knowing how much heat's in a system, fouls things up. <laughs> and I'd give it a couple of drives, and the catalytic converters can behave because it knows the temperature of the fuel. We'll see. I must say, uh, the catalytic converters are working a lot stronger now that I'm on a second drive cycle. Like I just dropped off a uh, freeway speed and slowed down for some slow traffic and I went and did more of a cruise mode instead of a high and it dropped down to zero. It's right back to at least staying rich. If it doesn't drop down that 0.45 it still is rich. Now remember I'm looking at the bottom scales because I'm caring about uh, catalytic converter activity. Um, but I should entirely forget to remember I got front O2 sensors that if they're misbehaving they'll command things wrong creating problems downstream nah even cruising like this gently at 55 that, that's a lot of air force on a big truck well now it's staying rich in the, the downstream regardless of whether it's rich or lean up front and then it dips low again. Well, I'll let the PCM decide. These catalytic converters still look a little weak, but uh, they always looked weak before. Maybe with everything being commanded right, with the, knowing the fuel pressure or the fuel temperature, things will be better. This is so nice. I'm sorry if it's hard to see, but I have a fuel tank monitor that tells me I have way more range than I ever thought I did and I'm going 65 and I'm getting 18 miles per gallon and it's kind of windy uh, 16 15 miles per gallon that's more normal for me on the freeway this this is exciting um, it's running more timing advance it knows the temperature of the fuel I guess and so it, it changed things quite a bit um, still hasn't figured out EGR on my way back from my little trip but this is exciting yeah instant drop down a little bit because I'm recording a film instead of keeping my road. My, uh, if you control your steering wheel really, really, really stiff, you get better gas mileage. You just do. So two hands is better than one. But I have long-term fuel trims now. This is so exciting. Because it didn't know the temperature of the fuel, it's like, eh, I'm just going to do everything short term. And it could get as high as 10% sometimes on a real cold day, I guess because it didn't know the temperature of things. Yeah, it's too much wind for me driving cord. But I have long-term fuel trims, and they help because setting a, mem a little bit of memory really improves gas mod. That That is totally exciting. There's no way I should be turning on the freeway getting this kind of gas mod. It's just phenomenal. Like 18.2, oh, instance looking even better. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, long-term fuel trims might save me over $500 in catalytic converters. Good thing I did one repair before I, I spent money on more parts. Catalytic converters are doing good. I might change my mind in the city, but this is awesome. Er, number one is normally looking really poor and it's actually doing really well right now. So that one was the one that was more sensitive to not knowing the temperature of the fuel, I suppose really you have two engines strapped together they're affected by each other but they are run separately 
That's how I look at every V engine. Mm. Sorry if the sun glare was too much for you to be able to see before. The only code I've got is P0328, which is really good. And uh, pulling it up on my readiness monitors, I see the only one left yellow incomplete is EGR. So it's hot enough to run EVAP and say it's good. I guess it wasn't clearing because I was driving in the winter, like uh, Brian's Mobile One was teaching us the other day. Uh, good luck if you had to have your stuff reset and it's winter and your inspection's up and you got a newer car because it's, I don't know, you can drive around on freeway speeds in a heated building. I don't know how you're going to get it to clear. Uh, EGR is the only one incomplete. It's got, uh, if it's converts, its catalytic converters are good. And it, it drives with actual fuel trims now. It, it has long term instead of just short term. And uh, they're usually pretty mild. And when it overguesses and says like 7%, it tends to have a little bit negative on the uh, sh short term side to correct back. So uh, things are looking really good. I might have saved myself a catalytic converters. Thank goodness I didn't go and buy those. Bought some tools instead since you know I got some a lot of time before I have to make registration again. But uh, it's looking good. I'm happy. I get it. We all like to save money, right? That's why I got into DIY and eventually it turned into my profession. So am I saving money or am I just spending a lot of money on tools? But regardless, get out there and work on something. Don't make you feel good about yourself.